so this is a whole new uh, procedure that's set out. And um, to be honest with you, it's very detailed too. So we're still working our way through the the two bills. Uh, one bill really set out this early evaluation conference. Um, and I think it's going to open up some more tools for employers to try to get an early resolution of PAGA cases and limit the plaintiff's attorney's fees right off the bat. Um, we'll see how it plays out. I'm a little skeptical, uh, and I'll talk about my my um, <laughs> doubts on this here. And if I'm plaintiff's attorney, what I would do on this uh, here at the uh, back end of, of discussing what this is. But um, the reformed PAGA establishes this early evaluation conference starting October 1st, 2024. Um, so diff two different concepts for employers, the small employers with under 100 employees, there's this different procedure in place. And basically, upon notification, um, the employer can go to the LWDA, submit a confidential proposal to cure any alleged violations. Um, and then the LWDA can take a look at that, see if those were cured, what the employer did. And if the LWDA says, yes, those were cured, everybody's made whole, it would prevent the plaintiffs from proceeding with a, a civil action. Um, so it'd be a conference and the parties would get together, uh, work with the LWDA on this and, um, and work out the details. So there's that for small employers, for large employers, 100 or more employees, um, it's going to play out in the um, trial court. So um, right off the bat, and again, the, you know, for any new um, PAGA cases filed after June 19th, employers have this option. Even before responding to the lawsuit, you can submit this request for an early evaluation conference, and it stays the entire civil action, stays discovery, stays everything. And the court then has to um, send everybody off to this early evaluation conference and get a, um, a neutral, third-party neutral to help um, work out uh, some details on this. And the conference, I got it set out here on uh, these bullet points on this slide. With this third-party neutral, the parties would work, work out whether there's any uh, violations, whether they occurred, if they did occur, did the employer cure them? Strengths and weaknesses of the plaintiff's claims and the employer's defenses, settlement options, and then whether the parties need to share any other information to get the case resolved early. There's some other issues here too that I don't have set out in the slides, but it, um, it can require the plaintiff's lawyers to submit what their attorney's fees are to date as well. And there's some useful tools for employers to, to use that information. Um, and I won't get into it all today, but um, it starts opening up a lot of different tools to defend these claims and try to get an re early resolution. And if you don't get an early resolution, I think this can be a, a great um, defense for employers to say, look, you know, we tried to cure this. Uh, and yeah, there were some technical violations. We, uh, we proposed a settlement and you didn't take it, and um, here's what your attorney's fees were at that point, there might be an argument to limit the attorney's fees going forward if the plaintiff's counsel doesn't beat that, that settlement offer that you make during this evaluation conference. So again, brand new, we're still thinking it through, but opens up a lot of available arguments there for employers. Um, so, um, the other issue for the large employers too, which I found uh, interesting, if the neutral and the pl plaintiff's counsel don't agree with the employer that it was cured and the cure is sufficient to address any alleged violations, the employer can by itself file a motion with the trial court and ask the judge to approve uh, the actions they've taken to cure and uh, make everybody whole. So you can by uh, bypass this process and go right back to the, the trial judge. Um, the other benefit here too, is that it just stays the litigation and uh, the employer can use this to learn a lot of what the alleged violations are, who the plaintiff is, what they're alleging the violation was. And going back to Anne's issue that she spoke about earlier about their standing, can learn a lot about the plaintiff and what violations they allege they suffered and really limit the case 
during this process, even if it doesn't reach uh, a resolution during this um, early evaluation conference, it could be a very useful tool for employers. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out with the LWDA and the trial court. Now, my suspicion on this, if I'm plaintiff's counsel and your own and Ann, I'd like your feedback on this too. I show up at this conference and no matter what the employer says that they cured and everything, just kind of put the blinders on and say, no, that's not adequate. You, you didn't effectively um, cure the alleged violations and just kind of keep pushing the case and don't reach a resolution at this point to keep the pressure on. And I have a feeling the LWDA, they're underfunded right now. Part of this reform package is giving them some more money. And I think that's why that for small employers, this process doesn't kick in until October of this year. Um, but I don't know how involved the LWDA is going to be in on this process or how favorable to employers that's going to be as well. So um, I could see the plaintiffs just kind of ignoring this process, doing what they have to, to comply with what the law requires, but then just saying we disagree and we're going to litigate anyway. Yeah. You know, let me play skeptic. Uh, and uh, I find it uh, difficult to envision plaintiff's counsel uh, agreeing either with the, the cure proposed by the employer or even the, uh, the neutral evaluator. Um, and I agree with you, they, it, it, that would be uh, a difficult process to envision. And I believe they're gonna, they'd move forward anyway and have plenty of arguments as to why the cure is, uh, is not sufficient. But let me just throw this out there as well. Something I you know, thought about is that the, the confidential nature of the early resolution process may be a facade. Um, because although the evidence of the corrective actions are technically settlement communications and the cure process, they provide a roadmap potentially of violations and potentially certifiable issues that plaintiffs can use against the employer. So while the employers might cure a PAGA claim, uh, they could give the plaintiff the information they need to certify a class against them in the process. So again, yeah. just being skeptical of the of the nature, but those are potential issues. Of course, uh, the requested information that is uh, revealed through this process would still need to be formally secured through discovery in litigation. But you know, nevertheless, you may provide a roadmap for plaintiff's counsel. Mm -hmm.